Namaste. Hi everyone. I'm Avneet Alsanya, your yoga teacher for today's session. This session is really special to me. As you may or may not know, before uh, my career of being a yoga teacher in my past life, I used to be a track and field runner, sprinter, and football player. So the today's session is a really special theme to me because it's all about the legs. And that's something I have a lot of experience with having had to build up muscle tone and really create the best uh, way for my legs to be flexible and strong. So today we're going to be working on hamstrings. Now our hamstrings are connected to the quadriceps. That's the largest muscle in your body. So super important that we're able to use this muscle. And that only happens when we have a full range of mobility through our hamstrings. Our hamstrings are also connected to our hips. They help us extend the hips and they help us flex the knee. And the knee is often one of the most affected parts when it comes to injury or joint pain. So those are a couple reasons why. Another thing is that in yoga, we definitely need to work on our spine as that is the reason our Kundalini energy can rise. So. Our hamstring is not only connected to the leg, but it's also connected to the hips and is related to hip flexibility, which is related to the spine because our spine goes into the lower pelvic floor. So our whole body is connected. The hamstrings is working pretty much all of the major systems in the body. So this is a juicy flow. We're going to be on the floor a lot. So get ready to cool down. It's definitely easy beginner level for anyone and everyone. If you have a strap or a yoga belt, I would definitely recommend that you use it and I'll be explaining to you how that happens. Without further ado, let's get started. So I'm going to start in a Tadasan position. You can roll your shoulders back and just close your eyes. Keep your feet together, squeeze your glutes and feel the grounding below your feet. Take your palms into Namaskar Mudra in front of your heart center. We're going to chant one Omkar with an inhalation through the nostrils. We exhale for Om. yourself to set the intention for this class to relax find that balance between pulling and letting go pushing and relaxing and that is where we find that space in yoga which is a little bit of effort and a little bit of faith gently open your eyes with a smile on your face relax your palms to the sides going to open your legs out wide about three and a half feet take your hands to your hips and we'll do a gentle hip rotation so as i said your hamstrings are very connected to your hips and rotate forward so when we improve our flexibility of the leg we will definitely see an improvement in the hip and the spine so this is a great class for anyone who's new to yoga great place to start as well as those of you that are also working out running going to the gym all of these exercises contract the muscles relax your hips and contracting the muscles makes them more stiff so it's very important to do these stretches if you're playing any sort of sport that involves your leg relax your hands to the sides we're going to reach our hands forward and keep our back in a flat position our spine is straight you're going to look down if you need the support you can keep your hands on your hips you can already feel the opening of the hamstrings so this is a really gentle forward fold take a nice deep breath with that flex back feel the opening of the glutes the hips and we're not going beyond 50 percent Requires a little bit of your back strength to stay in this position. Take a nice deep breath and come back to standing. Now you're going to turn both your feet out to the left side. 
and step your right foot to the top of the mat. We're going to raise our hands up and we're trying to lengthen from the ankles all the way to the hips. Feel the stretching rising up of your knees as they begin to extend, lengthen your spine, feel the growth in your shoulders, fingers, keep stretching up and bending forward. We swan dive our palms down to the floor, relax your head. Wherever you are in this fold is where you need to be. Do not push yourself beyond and especially because we're still warming up. So you might not reach the four, you might be halfway up. I would please highly suggest that you do not curve your spine, but stay in a flat back position. And if you are able to reach the floor, try to bring your stomach into the thighs. Keep your knees straight, that's the key. Beautiful. Hold on to your elbows and you can gently sway left and right for ragdoll. Feel the weight distribute between your right and left foot. Feel the calming effect in your mind. Make sure your breath is steady and rhythmic. Feel the heaviness from the hamstrings now that we've added a lot of pressure a lot of pull, just breathe through that. Your muscles are lengthening and they require oxygen to expand. So don't stop breathing. In and out of the nostrils. Amazing. We're gonna roll up using the lower mid and upper back, back to a straight standing Dadasan. To complete our warm-up, we're going to come into a dynamic forward fold. We're going to raise our arms as we inhale. And we're going to stay loose. We're not going to flex anything. Just open your arms in a fluid way and exhale as you sweep them back down. Allow your knees to micro-bend. It's absolutely fine. We're doing a dynamic heat warming. Fall forward as you exhale. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, forcefully. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. Notice how I'm adding a little swing, a little momentum. This dynamic movement is such a great way to warm up the body. Exhaling. And relax your arms to the sides. Lovely. You're going to step your right foot about three and a half feet back in the same line with your heels in the line. You're going to come into a Aso Sanjalana Asana. Now we've got our knee down, our toe down, and our arms are to the sides. Lovely. We're going to try to see if we can touch the tips of our toes, uh, fingers on the mat. If not, you can also keep your hands on your knee above the thigh. Now you're going to come on your big toe, raise up your knee, and bring your arms into a warrior one. So we went from a low lunge, Anjani Asan, to high lunge, warrior one. Now you're starting to feel the lengthening in the back leg. Quadricep stretch, psoas, femurs. Again, this is the muscle which is antagonistic to the hamstrings. So when we stretch one of them, the other one is going to also get stretched. All right. In the same way, we are going to turn to the opposite side, pivoting your toes down. Sweep your palms down to the ground. Drop your knee. Come to an Anjani Asana. You can keep your arms to the sides and feel the opening of the hip, upper thigh. Taking a deep breath as we pump up the legs with oxygen. 
Lovely. I'm gonna come up to the toes, move into a warrior one on the right knee. Make sure the back knee is straight. Feel the stretch of that back leg from the calf, ankle, knees, to the quads and hips. We're not gonna leave out a single part of the leg today. Complete that stretch with a, with a beautiful reach up with your palms and back. You'll notice how much more space you're giving your legs when you also integrate your upper body. So when I reach my arms and back, I'm also allowing my leg to stretch even more. See how we are all just one connected system. Cannot look at anything in isolation. Raise your arms and bring them back down. Now I'm gonna step my feet a little closer, two feet in. My right foot is now straight and my left is at a 45 degree angle. I'm gonna take my hands and either put them on my elbows or I'm gonna put them in a reverse prayer position and join the palms, open the shoulders. Now, if this is not accessible or if you have tight wrists, as I said, feel free to just hold on to your elbow. We're gonna twist our hips. It's called squaring them all the way to the right. We're gonna inhale and exhale and bring our chest down to the knee. If you're halfway up, absolutely fine. Now we're really targeting the hamstrings in this pose. This is our amazing pyramid pose. A great pre-run stretch. Inhale, pivot your toes to the left side. Allow your arms to stay where they are. If you need to readjust, you can do that. Square your hips to the left. Inhale, look up, exhale, bend forward. Exhale, inhale deeply, hear the sound of your breath. Inhale. So, we just finished our pyramid pose. And you're gonna come back up and step your feet together at the top of your mat. And what you're gonna do is come back one more time, stretch out your arms to the sky, bend forward, step your right foot back, come into Anjani Asana, into a low lunge. Now relax your back, toe and with the front foot come onto your heel now you might need to step forward to get enough space to straighten your knee the knee should be straight keep your hands on your hips now according to your flexibility you can bend forward you might not bend forward you might be able to stay here otherwise you can actually pull your hamstrings more by bringing your stomach to the thigh and take that yoga belt if you're using it around the foot and you can pull yourself deeper using the strength of the belt. Lovely. Just keep it hooked around your foot. Again, the belt is not required. It's merely a supplement. We are all doing the exact same thing. And if you have enough internal strength, which ideally is what is required, you should be able to pull yourself without the help of any prop. You can step that left foot in, you're on your knees, and step your right foot forward. Place the heel down, both palms on either side of the foot. Now I'm flexing the toe like to extend the hamstring even more. And I'm leaning forward as much as I can without rounding the back. We want to stay in alignment. So the hips are stable and we're simply bending from the lower back. And if that's not happening, if you're starting to slouch, just stay where you are, take a belt, rope towel, rope it around that foot and pull yourself a little deeper. Inhale, coming straight back up. Step your right foot back. Lovely. 
That's one of the best hamstring stretches. We're gonna make our way down to the floor. You can sit and extend your legs straight. And we're going to be doing these two movements, flexing with your toes back, pointing with your toes forward. We are engaging our hamstrings when we flex and we're engaging our muscles more when we point. So let's flex a lot so that we can engage the hamstring today. So start off with your toes pointed upwards in a flex. Notice how you can feel a tighter pull at your knee around the back and the quadriceps are also engaged. Raise your arms and straighten your spine. Inhale as we open the chest. And take that belt around the feet. You can now pull yourself forward. Perhaps your arms reach your knees, perhaps the shin, perhaps the ankles. Wherever you are, maybe the toes if you're a regular practitioner. Bring the first three fingers around your big toe. Fold forward. Important thing here is two things. Our back needs to be straight and your knees need to be as straight as possible or else we're not really stretching the hamstring. So if you're you know, struggling and you're looking like this, then take a step back, start in your foundation, take a belt to help you out, flex your toes, and now keeping your knees as straight as you can, only come as forward as you can without compromising your alignment. So if this is where you are, just be proud and be patient. Hold yourself here. If you're flexing your toes, you're definitely pulling your hamstrings. So regardless of how far or deep you are in this pose, you're already working on that hamstring flexibility. Remember to breathe. Help your muscles by pumping in oxygen, give them food to, to grow, and relax, lovely. In the same way, we're gonna take our right foot across. You can either come into a half lotus position or you can cross your knee more and bring the knee stacked over the other. Again, raise your arms, lengthen your spine, and bend forward. So there's a lot of forward folds when we work on hamstrings. This is also great for opening um, the back and it's a preliminary practice for back bending which is an advanced practice and it requires already open hamstrings believe it or not raise your arms and relax your hands excellent the same leg we are now going to bring outside into Janu Shishasan. so you can rest your heel at the inner thigh and your right knee outwards, flexing your left toe, lengthening the back, bending forward. Now we like to say that we're bringing our chin to the shin and that's not because you're actually able to, to go that deep. It's to remind you that you're not rounding your back and you're not collapsing your neck. You want to look forward. You want to look at your toes. We're not just going down, we're going forward. It's a forward. Fold. So bring your body in elongated in that direction and you should be keeping your chin up. Raise your arms and relax. The last one on the right side, taking your foot outside of your hip. This is Triyang Mukha Kapada Asana. And you can try to bring your thighs as close as possible. If that's not possible for you, you can leave some space as well. We're going to raise our arms for one last time. Give it your best. Folding forward, feeling the opening of the glutes, stretching your sit bones, and a beautiful stretch. The quadriceps, left hamstring. Notice the difference between each stretch. Each one was a fold, but each one had a different position with the leg and a different effect. That really just goes to show how interconnected the body is if this leg remains the same. When the right leg is doing something else that adds more pressure on the left. You might you know, wonder, well, this is my right leg. What does it have to do with my left? But the hip is connected to both hamstrings. 
and when we create space or we have an extra pull on one end we're pulling it all the way through now we'll do the same thing on the left side so let's just go through it quickly starting with crossing your leg in a half lotus position Ardha Baddha Paschimottanasana and if you can bring your knees opposite crossing the leg over and coming into a forward fold holding here with deep breath inhale and release your arms take that leg outside for Janu Shishasan. inhale raise exhale folds I'm going to remind you to use your belt whenever you feel necessary. And the longer you hold this pose, you will feel even more open. So do practice this. Pause the video. Practice on your own. Practice it three times this week. And maybe just pick three of your favorite asanas. Inhale, raise your arms and hold them each for about five minutes. You will be a different person. In after those five minutes <laughs> now take your foot outside of the hip try to bring the thighs together extend your arms and fold forward flex that right toe exhale as you fold forward because we're contracting the chest and lungs we're expelling the air out Inhale, raise, exhale, relax your arms and straighten your left leg. Beautiful job. Our legs should already feel nice. Give them a little wiggle. Let that prana flow all over. All right. Now we're going to do the beautiful relaxing part, lying down on your back. You're going to take your right knee and bend it into the chest. Now I'm going to give you two options. The easy option is with your left knee bent. The harder option is with your left knee straight. Now this is not a competition. You have to be the one where you're actually genuinely at. If you're able to relax your left knee completely down on the ground, that's wonderful. You can take your belt around your right foot and you can start to straighten this leg. Now you're only gonna straighten it as much as you can without pulling anything. Now by pulling, I mean forcefully jerking or putting your body in a position it's not ready for. So let's go step by step, extending the leg. You can hold on to the belt as you extend or you can hold on to the shin. Relax your bottom foot all the way until you're in a straight legged position. If you need to micro bend, that's great. Know your body. Take a deep breath. In the same way, we're going to open our leg out to the right side. Take another exhale. Lovely. Observe the changes in your left leg as we're opening the hip joint. Inhale, raise your leg. Lovely. And you're going to cross the leg on the opposite side. Bend the knee. Open your hands. Hold the ground. Turn your head to the right palm. Gentle spinal twist. Coming back to the center. Release the right leg. Now, again, option number one, bend the knee as you bring your left knee into the chest. Option number two, straighten the knee. All together, we extend the left leg. Inhale as you extend. Step by step, coming deeper. Giving yourself time to get into your peak position every breath that you take you can keep actively 
stretching deeper, actively breathing. It might look like nothing's going on, but you and I both know there's a lot going on. And it's important that we don't do anything passively. We use our full awareness, be mindful of what's happening in the body and not do it mechanically. Using the power of your mind, our body can move and open in ways that we didn't expect. Not to mention that it has a super powerful, refreshing effect being in the present moment, purifying your mind. Relax that and you can take the same grip and open your leg to the left side. I'm just going to move out so I can have space to show you. Notice that if your right leg is bent, you can do the same thing with the knee bent. It's definitely easier with the belt if you're not able to reach your foot like I am because that way you can give some extra pressure. And when you're ready, inhale, raise the leg, exhale, bend the knee, open your arms out, twist your head to the left palm. Deep breath in and out. We always like to close and open the session, keeping the spine in mind. Yoga is definitely centered around Spine flexibility, kundalini energy. We want our back to be straight and strong and mobile. We often don't stretch for throughout the entire day. So this is really relieving a lot of tension in the back. Come back to a neutral position. Take both your legs, bend the knees into the chest. Roll right and left. And close your eyes and rock yourself forward and back beautiful all right the final stretch is nothing but a forward fold upside down so which asana am I talking about plow pose you're gonna come into Viparit Karani with your legs straight up 90 degrees you're gonna flex the toes, then you're going to point the toes. Yep, feel that stretch in your hamstrings. You're going to bring your legs back. And some of you might just be able to bend them forward. Others might be able to lift the hips. So you can use your palms or push up your hips. And try to bring your feet all the way down towards the floor. Now, if your knees are bending, that's okay. Keeping in mind that you're a beginner, I'm going to show you the beginner variation. So notice how we're actually doing the same motion we did before, but upside down. You can lengthen, extend your legs. If you're able to, slowly work your way into a complete halasan. Interlock your fingers. Touch your toes to the ground. Relax your back. And exhale. Release yourself down return your legs to the ground collapse your whole body spread apart your arms your feet close your eyes exhale you've reached shavasan congratulations take another deep breath you've earned this five to ten minute shavasan so feel free to take it. You can take a bolster behind your head or a lower back. The more you relax, the more you can go back with full energy at the next session. So feel free to stay in your Shavasan as I close this session with an Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Thank you so much for joining me today. Really, really had a lot of fun with you. I hope you learned something and you're feeling the changes in your body. I'll see you next time.
keep practicing.